In the last video, I showed you how to start laying out the timeline for the expenses for your startup and what that might look like so you can start to get the picture of what it's going to cost you to run your business until you can bring your product to market. And I suggested at the end of it that you want to build into that timeline the point at which you expect to actually start bringing in some revenues so that you can really factor in everything you need to in terms of getting from the starting point where you have no money coming in to where you'll start to bring money in, how much funding you'll need from the beginning until then to cover yourself to make sure you can survive and then how much additional funding you'll need to get through from that starting point of when you start to bring in revenue to where you actually become profitable and you can survive on the working capital produced by your own operations so that's just the beginning getting that layout done and starting to see the picture and as I mentioned the picture is by no means complete there's gonna be more to add I'm just giving you a starting point to work from so that you can then think in terms of beyond what I've laid out what additional things you might add in or how you might tweak or change it remember that if you do need additional help with any of this I'm available for one-on-one -on -one. that's right here at sethdavid.com and if you'd like a copy of the template simply come over here to the contact Seth page fill out this gorgeous form and make sure that in the how can I help you box you indicate that you like the template for accounting for startups. Now let's go ahead and take a look at how we can take this one step further. I'd mentioned that we might want to take an example of the salaries for software developers and expand on that because maybe we need more than one developer. And at a certain point you'll want to build a template that lets you take a more detailed look at one of these line items and then roll that back up into here. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a new tab and let's call this software developers. and I'd never named uh, sheet two. Let's just call this the model. We'll call it the business model. All right, so now we're gonna start a template of software developers. The reality is, just to save some time, we're gonna take this whole thing and copy it for a second. Because we wanna get that same timeline in, essentially. But now we're gonna gut this out. Because this whole thing is software developers. And I'm not gonna need the cumulative here for this purpose. So now what we want to do is call the software developers. And we want to put an assumption. And the reality is, depending on what their specific role is and what part of the app or whatever it is that we're building that they might be working on, there might be different rates of pay. So you'll have developer one, two, three, and so on. What I'd do in reality is probably put their names in here if we know who they're going to be, uh, or just keep it generic until you have a name. Uh, this way it's just all very clear. Now we said that we're going to assume that we start this project in May of 2016. So I'll start that here. Now again we need to look at uh, some different rates, right? We need to look at annual, monthly, what have you. So the bottom line is we need to look at what it's going to cost per month per developer. So the first one that we sort of spec'd out here, we said it was 56.67 a month, right? That was based roughly on 68,000 divided by 12. But maybe we need a chief software engineer who's going to get ten thousand dollars a month right and maybe we need somebody else in between who's going to get eight thousand dollars a month let's leave it at that right and all i did was copy and paste down and now i'm going to copy and paste across and now i've got my total software development expense now what's sort of Im in, uh, implied here that i re really haven't discussed is that we're paying these people as outside contractors because we're not really building in any payroll type information into the model here. We're just assuming we're paying them a flat rate and that they'll take that and pay their own taxes and do what they need to there. So keep that in mind. If This, this is assuming that there's no payroll and payroll taxes and all that. But of course, if that's the assumption we want to go with, we can build that in here too. Another time, another video. For now, I want to keep this short and sweet because now the rest is easy. I simply take any given month, and now I'm going to start it from January so that everything's consistent. And I hit my equal sign in the month of January for the software development line. Click over to software developers, point to the total, and click there, and hit enter. And now I'm just going to copy and paste it all the way across. So now I have my total software development uh, 
line item, which it, which consists of everything that I've put into this model. So this, my friends, and and you can do this by the way with every any one of these line items. You can expand on any of these. Um, you know, as you come up with more areas, uh, maybe there's other professional services you need to hire people for. At some point, maybe when you start getting really operational, you'll need an administrative assistant. You'll need to pay that person. That will definitely be a salaried person, right? So as you add line items in here, you can easily add schedules like this to support those line items. And in fact, what we'll do now is let's make a duplicate of this. I just right-clicked it, duplicated it, and let's call this uh, expense line item schedule. This way, any time now that you want to build out a schedule for any line item that you have in your business model, all you have to do is make a copy of this, build the model out, and then flow it into the appropriate line item here, the same way I did with the software developers. It's that simple now to start building a model and be able to get much, much more detailed about what costs are going to go into any line item, and now flow those back over to the line item. So we're getting a little more and more sophisticated about how this model works and what it's going to look like. In the next video, we're going to start now getting outside of the projections part of it, which is really what we've been looking at, and into how you can use Google Sheets to track your actual expenses once you go operational. And that's going to become important because, as I've mentioned a few times already, if you don't have the budget to pay for, let's say, a QuickBooks Online, then you're going to want to use something, if you're bootstrapping, that's free, something like Google Sheets. And I'm going to show you how you can set up a schedule in Google Sheets that, that's going to make it easy for you to not just track your income and expenses, but also provide the right kind of reporting on it so that when, when it's all said and done, it's not just a long log of transactions, but you can use it to produce meaningful information. I'm going to show you how to do it, and I'm going to show you it's not that hard to do. Again, I say that all of this with the caveat and, and, and the urgency that, that I feel I need to stress here that as soon as you possibly can, you want to start using an actual accounting product in order to track the actual stuff. You'll still want to do this modeling stuff to get a sense of what it's going to take to run your company and how much venture capital funding you might need in order to make that company survive. And then once you have that funding in place, we're going to build in the back, we're going to come back to this model and build in the amount of capital we receive on the date on which we receive it. And based on that, that's when we're going to get into the true burn rate, where we're going to look at how long is that money going to last based on our current business model. This, my friends, is how you build your strategy for how you're going to manage the financial part of your startup and make sure that you can actually present something to the potential funding candidates that shows them that you're responsible, that you have a strategy, that you're going to spend their money wisely because you've taken the time to do something like this and, and build that strategy around how you're going to make the best possible use of that, best possible use of that money. It also gives that uh, VC funding person the opportunity to work with you on it and say, hey, let me help you with this. Maybe we can bootstrap this a little better and cut back on some of the costs to help, them make, to help make the money last longer. This, my friends, is how you do it and how you do it right. As always, I hope you learned something, had some fun along the way. I hope you're having an absolutely fantastic day, and I look forward to seeing you on the web.